Well, good morning. Uh, Pastor Lou here. Uh, we're day uh, 19 of our Lenten devotional. Right at 7 a.m. Um, is when we do these. Um, and I am confident today uh, that my two children are not reading that email. And so uh, here we are, 7, 7.33. We're pretty close. Um, I feel like it's an accomplishment. And so it is good to be with you this morning. And so we're in this uh, 40 days of Lent. We're going through this devotional, uh, which is fantastic, from the book Pete Gregg, God on Mute. Um, and I encourage you, I dropped the Amazon link for the book if you haven't already to purchase it. It's a fantastic book um, if you want to follow along, if you want to read it. Uh, and, uh, and like I've uh, said before, uh, they redid the book with um, a 40-day devotional in the back. Um, and so that's what we're using for this Lenten season. And so uh, today... Uh, is day 19 and it's titled victory and so uh, our, our format our, our process for going through this devotional for you if you don't remember if you just joining us is uh, this acronym pray and so it's pause that we stop that we pause what we're doing we step out of the uh, ordinary we step into the extraordinary that we uh, we pause uh, to reflect and that reflection is looking at what God is doing, what God has done. That maybe it's reading Scripture, maybe it's reflecting on our day uh, that we uh, had yesterday. Uh, what was it about the day that uh, I felt like God was moving, or where did I feel God was silent yesterday? It's reflecting on what's uh, to happen today. And so, God, where where are you calling me to move? Where are you um, expecting me to step into something that you're doing? Uh, and so, thinking through that. And then asking questions uh, that we ask of ourselves and we ask of God, that we're, we're constantly asking questions. We're trying to figure out this, uh, this world that we live in and how our faith uh, plays a role in our everyday interactions. Uh, a lot of times we think um, faith is uh, here and our life is here sometimes, that they're separate. You know, maybe they have a little bit of influence on each other. Um, but you know, how do we apply our faith in our work? How do we apply our faith in our families? How do we apply that in our relationships? And, and so we, we ask the questions. We're trying to figure this out. And the last thing is that we yield. Uh, we yield to God's will. That uh, as we hear what God uh, asks of us, what God asks of his people, what God says in Scripture, that we yield to that, um, that will of God. Uh, and, and what would that look like in our everyday life? And so, so today, as I said, day 19, it's um, uh, titles victory, and it says this. Uh, he says, pause as we enter into prayer this morning. He says, pause and be still, breathe slowly, recenter, and, uh, and bring together that scattered sense upon the presence of God as we focus. He focuses on these verses out of Psalms 22, 10 through 11 says this from birth I was cast uh, from birth I was cast on you uh, from my mother's womb you have been my God do not be far from me for trouble is near and there is no one to help so word Psalm 22 10 through 11 says this from birth I was cast onto you from my mother's womb you have been my God do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. And so he talks about um, in this uh, this experience of victory, we have this tension in the world. Uh, he says, you know, the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians, O death, where is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is, is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And so here we have this writing claiming victory over death. And, and we know that. We read that in Scripture. We, uh, we know that story. Uh, we know what Jesus has done. Uh, but sometimes it's really hard for us to see that in our everyday life. Sometimes we feel the sting, all right? Sometimes we feel uh, the trouble. We feel uh, the, uh, the worry. We feel the anxiety of, uh, of the things around us, the, the things happening uh, maybe to other people around us, the things happening in our own lives. And just like the psalmist, 
um, we want God to be near because we feel like no one, no one can really help us in some of these things. And so uh, he, he refers back to his, uh, in the book, uh, having this conversation with a friend, uh, Margaret, who's, who's dying of cancer. She says this, she says, cancer is so limited, it cannot uh, cripple love. It cannot shatter hope, corrode faith, eat away peace, destroy confidence. It can't kill friendships. It can't shut out memories. It can't silence courage, quench the spirit, or lessen the power of Jesus. But yet it still exists. The, the, these things still happen in our world. And so in, on, in one sense, we claim victory over death. And then in another sense, we experience it in a very real way um, in our lives and the lives of those around us. And, uh, uh, and you know, this whole um, devotional series, you know, we're talking about suffering. Um, we're, we're trying to understand uh, why God suffered, uh, why, why Jesus suffered on the cross. We're trying to figure out why suffering still exists in our world. We're trying to figure out what, what to do with suffering. And I, um, I, I try and think of suffering in this way, and this is the, the world I live in, is that suffering is this really uh, difficult conversation at the intersection of what I believe about God, you know, my, my theology, my thoughts, my beliefs about who God is, um, and, and God's character, and, and what God wants to do in this world, in my life, who God is, and very real pastoral care. And sometimes um, the, the God that I know, the God that I um, believe in, the God that I uh, think of, the God that I have a relationship with, um, and the suffering of this world when they intersect, they, they don't make sense. I can believe God is good, and yet I can sit in front of somebody who's experiencing uh, a whole lot of suffering in this world. And you have to ask the question, why? Where, where's the disconnect? Because we have in scripture, oh death, where is your sting? We've claimed victory over death and sin and all those things through the power of Jesus. But yet, we still experience very real trouble in our world. And so what do we do with that? And so Pete Gregg says we ask questions. We ask questions about ourselves. You know, why are we struggling here with this? If we believe this, why, why do we still think this? And we ask questions of God. He says, as Christians, we believe in life after death, but also life before death, that we have this experience to live, that we have this life to give and to, to shape, that we, um, that we get to make choices in our experience. And he says, even life in the midst of death. And I think we all know uh, those experiences where we feel like we're in the midst of death and yet we still have to live. We, we have experiences of loss in our life with those around us, um, uh, really difficult things, and yet we still have to make choices. We still have to live our life. He says, what might the resurrection power of Jesus look like in the midst of my struggle today? How can we hold that tension between what we believe about God and what we see in front of us? Knowing that in our minds, because we can't understand the full picture, uh, those don't make sense. And he says, ask the Lord, he said, Lord, fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Let my life be a marker, uh, be marked by defiant joy, uh, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That let my life be uh, 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 in, in defiance of the chaos around me. Uh, when it feels like death still has its sting, how can I hold on to joy? How can I give peace? How can I show kindness? He says we do that by yielding. He says the well of him, um, and <laughs> Pete Gregg loves hymns, um, and so you may not be familiar with hymns. Um, I, I know enough to get through a church service, but he loves hymns. And he says this, he says uh, this great hymn, uh, All to Jesus I Surrender. And he, he lists these words, I want to read them to you. He says, All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. He says, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. And so again, we have this pattern of, of really looking around, of, uh, of stopping, of pausing, of reflecting, of asking questions, and then yielding. And, and Pete Gregg is saying, the only way for us to make sense uh, of the suffering around us is to yield to God's will, to say, God, you, you have it 
uh, control, that your plan is better than mine, that uh, for us, this experience of life, uh, life before death, uh, it feels strange. Uh, but yet there is a plan for us after death. And that is the bigger plan. That is the plan where uh, all things are redeemed, all things are repaired, all things are fixed. Um, and he says sometimes we have to uh, have our joy, have our hope, have our peace, our kindness, our, our grace, our mercy, all those pieces have to be anchored on something we can't yet see. And what does that look like in our life today? And so my hope for you today is that, um, that you experience those things, that you experience hope uh, in the midst of struggle, that you find joy in even the most difficult situations, um, that in the struggle, when you really feel the sting of this life, when it feels like there is still trouble, even after the cross, even after all that God has done for his people, for you, for me, that we still struggle with things, that you can still have hope in something greater. And so I encourage you, like I said, if you haven't already, uh, buy the book, uh, check it out, read along with us, follow in the devotional. Uh, we're just about halfway, so there's plenty of time to jump in and be a part of what uh, God is going to do through this Lent season as we walk towards Easter. And so uh, have a great day. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, someone else will be on here, um, and uh, maybe their children will behave, and they'll be here at 7 o'clock. Uh, but it's been great to be with you, and uh, I'm praying for each of you as you experience not only the joy, uh, but the sting of the day, that you would have uh, God's peace and presence with you. So have a great day, and I'll see you all later on this week.